Okay, let's keep going. So the function of the heart is to send the blood to the lung and to the body. And the left ventricles, uh, they, they are de designed to send the blood to the whole body. So here's a bigger muscle layer compared with the right ventricle. And you have the valves, all the valves in the cardiovascular system. They make sure the blood only go in one direction, so one way flow. And the structure of the valves, they are not muscle, they are made of dense connective tissue. So it belongs to the fibroskeletal system. And when you cut the heart like this, and you found all the four valves connected together around here. And there are, there are those dense connective tissue. So two AV valves, two semilunar valves. And they work in a sequence. So when the heart work is atrial contract, then ventricle contract. When the atrial contract, the blood, let's look at previous slides, these two AV valves open, so blood can go from the atrium to the ventricle. And after that, next slide, the ventricle start to contract. When the ventricle start to contract, it will send blood to the aorta and pulmonary artery. So you found that these two semilunar valves open at the same time, but the AV, the AV valve actually closed, so the blood won't flow back to the atria. So the blood only go, when the ventricle contract, the blood will go to the aorta. It won't flip back to the atria. The heart itself needs blood, and is supplied by the coronary artery, coronary system, circulation system. And these are the coronary artery. It's a small branch start from aorta. So when the blood from the left ventricle squeezes to the aorta, it will go through the coronary artery, and it will supply the blood flow to the whole body. If this blood vessel, the coronary artery, been blocked, and apparently the heart won't be able to get enough oxygen, and they will start to die in three minutes, and that's heart attack. And this show you the posterior view. So after the coronary artery, it becomes the coronary vein, and those deoxygenated blood will go back to the through the coronary vein, eventually through the coronary sinus, go back to the right atrium. It's like a small circulation surround the heart. And the heart muscles, heart cells, can be divided into the contractile cells. They are the ones responsible for contracting, producing big power. Also, you have the conducting system. They are also called the pacemaker cells. They spontaneously generate action potential. So the signal to ask the heart to contract comes from the heart itself. That's the pacemaker cells. And these pacemaker cells, they like to fire together. They generate electrical signal together. They start from the SA node on the right atrium. And from the SA node, it will spread out to the two atria, two atria, and it will go to the AV node. And after it go to the AV node, it will go through the bundle or branch to the Purkinje fiber. Now it go to the two ventricle. So the electrical signal start from the atrium, and then go to the ventricle, because they all fire together, and you are able to record those electrical activity, and this electrical acti activity is called EKG electrocardiography your cardiac muscle they receive signal from the pacemaker cells they start to con they start to uh, depolarize then contract cardiac muscle have a long refractory period that's the time required them to finish the whole action potential long refractory period it take about two 100 to 300 milliseconds to finish the whole action potential. And after they finish the whole action potential, the heart muscle contraction relaxation is done. And the next time when they start the action potential, they won't be able to uh, sum up the, the contraction. So they, they, they could not be tantalized. Your heart won't have muscle cramp. The heart attack is not heart muscle cramp. It's, it's heart coronary artery being blocked. So this shows you the action potential of the heart muscle. 
it starts from the depolarization. Depolarization is due to the sodium flow in. They open the sodium channel. So this part is exactly the same like the, the neurons depolarization. But this part is different. They want the action potential to last for longer, long refractory period. So they open the calcium channel. And the calcium is high outside the low inside, inside the cell. So when you open the calcium channel, calcium will flow from high, which is outside, to low, that's the inside. So calcium flow in. When the calcium flow in, inside become more positive, and they call this calcium plate two. It makes the action potential last for much longer. And after calcium channel close, potassium channel open. When the potassium channel open, potassium gonna flow out because potassium is high inside the cell, low outside. When the potassium flow outside, this part is like the, the neurons repolarization. So it will go back to normal. And because of the calcium, the whole actual potential, not like a neuron, only take about three milliseconds. It take about 200 to 300 milliseconds to finish. And when you think about the heart rate, well, the heart rate maximally can go to 200 beats per minute, and that's it. It won't go even higher. And the reason is the heart muscle have a long refractory period, and it's a protective mechanism. So your heart muscle won't have muscle cramp, won't have tenderness. So start from the sodium, sodium flow in, depolarization. And then you have a calcium plate too. And the calcium will make the action potential last for longer. And eventually potassium flow out, repolarization. When we compare the action potential you learned in the neuron and also in the muscle, action potential of the of the muscle is very short and then the muscle contraction relaxation take much longer because of that you can generate another action potential and before the muscle completely relax their contraction can sum up and eventually reach the uh, contraction only situation we call the tenderness and that's muscle cramp and your heart muscle won't be able to have muscle cramp because it has a super long refractory period. Uh, on action potential take much longer to finish. And once it finishes the action potential, the heart muscle finish the contraction and relaxation. When you generate another action potential, this won't sum up, sum up. So the heart muscle won't have muscle cramp. The heart muscle have the conducting system, this is the pacemaker cells. So they they start from the right atrium with an SA node. And they also have the conducting cells uh, between the SA node, AV node, and AV node through the bundle of branch between G fiber. So the electrical signal start from the heart. That's the SA node on the right atrium. Because of that, this, the heart is self-exciting. The signal comes from the heart. So this slide show you those electrical signals start from the SA node, it will go to the AV node, from the AV node, go through the internodal pen, uh, go through the AV bundle, bundle branch, begin G fiber, and it will spread out to the whole heart. And this slide show you the elect electrical signal start from the SA node, you go to the two atria, and two atria depolarize together, and now the signal go to the AV node, through the AV bundle, go to the two ventricles. Two ventricles depolarize together. So start from the SA node, go to the two atria. Two atria depolarize together. And now the signal goes through the bundle branch, go to the two ventricles. Two ventricles depolarize, depolarize together. And they depolarize together, those electrical signal can be picked up by the electrode we put on the chest, and that's the EKG, electrocardiography. EKG have the P wave, the QRS, and the T wave. So the P wave start from the atria, atrial depolarization. The QRS, that's the ventricle signal, ventricle depolarization, and the T wave is the ventricle repolarization. That's how the EKG look like. So every one second, actually less than one second, because your heart rate is, is about 60 to 70 times per, min, per minute. So less than one second, you have one EKG. And you have the P wave from the atrial. 
and the QRS from the ventricle and the T from the ventricle. And QRS and T are much bigger than the P because the ventricles have more muscles compared with the atria. And now let's look at the mechanical events. The mechanic, me, mechanical events include the systole and diastole. So there's the big word to say contraction and relaxation. And the hard work in the sequence, atrial and ventricle. So start from the atrium. Is the atrium contract first? When the atrium contract, it's gonna send the blood to the ventricle and ventricle relax. And then the ventricle contract. When the ventricle contract, it will send the blood to the aorta and pulmonary artery. And when the ventricle contract, atrium relax. So this helped the blood to go back. And then the blood, both atrium and ventricle relax. So the heart spends two thirds of time in relaxation, only one third of time in contraction. And when we calculate the mean arterial pressure, we have the systolic pressure, diastolic pressure. You found the mean arterial pressure is not the average of these two. It's, the, it's closer to a diastolic pressure. And the reason is your heart spends twice more time in relaxation than contraction. When the heart contract, it can send the blood from the atrium to the ventricle. And then ventricle contract, it can send the blood from the ventricle to aorta and pulmonary artery. And when the, the valve, the, the valve close, it creates a heart sound. So the first heart sound come from the AV valves close. You only have one first heart sound because two AV valves close at the same time. So that's the first heart sound. And the second one is when the blood go from the ventricle into aorta and the pulmonary artery. You, you have two semilunar valves, but they close at the same time, so you create the second heart sound. So even though you have four chambers, you have four valves, you only hear two heart sounds. The first one from the AV valve close, the second one from the semilunar valve close. And here are some other terminologies. Uh, the, the stroke volume, that's how much blood sent out per contraction. And apparently this number can increase when you, are, uh, when you start to exercise. And cardiac output is how much blood you send out per minute. You take the stroke volume, multiply your heart rate, and that become your cardio output. Also, when you start to exercise, the cardio output increase. And let's look at the regulation. The signal comes from the heart to ask the heart to contract, but your autonomic nervous system can increase, decrease the heart rate. Parasympathetic nervous system decrease the heart rate, and you will control the SA note, decrease the heart rate. When you are fighting the bear, you want to increase the heart rate. That's the sympathetic nervous system, release no epinephrine. It will increase your heart rate and also increase stroke volume, so you can send more blood to your body when you are in an emergency situation. Okay, that's it.